On this stretch of I-90, I'm passing through what's called the Snoqualmie Pass. It's named after the same Snoqualmie natives who took the side of the U.S. and attacked Leshi in the Puget Sound War. This pass is one of only three lifelines that connect one half of Washington State to the other year-round. As you can see from this map from above, there are only three major year-round passes through the Cascades. The others may be closed in the winter months depending on the weather. And knowing the Cascades for their reputation for precipitation, it must be quite a logistical challenge to keep them open. When you think about it, the state really is divided in two. The western half of Washington has three quarters of the population of the state, which is equal to about Minnesota. The eastern half is a lot more wide open and sparsely populated. Because it's not burdened with the temperate rainforests of the western half, there's a lot of space to grow a diverse array of crops. The Snoqualmie Pass is also the same corridor that the Northern Pacific Railway was built through to get to Seattle. All those wars I put you through in the last few episodes were for a railroad right through here. It paid off. Because as we saw in episode 34, the population of Seattle doubled in 10 years because of it. As I ride out of the pass, it begins to dry off. The regions east of the Cascades are in a bit of a rain shadow, so the land turns a little less green. Most of the valleys in central Washington are agriculturally active along the rivers that act as lifelines for farms and orchards. Next door in the Yakima Valley, hops are grown, one of the main ingredients in beer. As of 2011, 77% of all hops grown in the U.S. are grown here. This is the U.S.'s share of hops production compared to the next eight largest producers. For three quarters of that slice, the Yakima Valley is a pretty important area when it comes to the craft beer craze that has hit the U.S. over the last 10 to 15 years. Hops are flowers that grow on strings in hop yards or hop fields. Many different varieties of hops are grown around the world and each of them gives beer a unique flavor of its own. Beer itself is one of the world's oldest beverages going back as far as 8,000 500 BCE. Hops being used in beer was only introduced to the brewing process as recently as its first documented use in 736. In Europe, dandelion, roots, marigold, and other herbs were used to make beer, but the addition of hops could balance the sweetness of malt with bitterness, and it would spoil much later. The tradition of beer being drank in the U.S. is in large part thanks to its previous colonizers. When today's United States was first being settled, a large port by the name of New Amsterdam was established by the Dutch. In a treaty that ended the Third Anglo-Dutch War, New Amsterdam was given to the British, who renamed it New York. Both the Dutch and British had brewing traditions steeped in beer instead of wine, setting the colonies' tastes in a direction much different from territories owned by the Spanish or French. For the longest time, U.S. tastes were similar to British-style ales. Then, in the mid-19th century, German immigration brought the idea of lagers, which were brewed with hops. Hops helped beer retain a longer shelf life. Beer became more profitable for large-scale manufacturing and shipping. Two Wheels, One Compass has an episode dedicated to that German wave of immigration in Season 2, which is responsible for this change in American beer tastes. The dry yet fertile Yakima River Valley allows hops to grow well without risking mildew, the greatest risk to the cash crop. The hops of the Yakima River Valley have fueled the craft beer craze in the United States over the last decade. India Pale Ales are a style of hoppy beer that has helped drive this craft beer demand. In 1994, hops were used to invent a new, strong, hoppy variant of India Pale Ale called the Double IPA, or Imperial IPA. The style is claimed to have been first brewed by Vinny Chilurzo, currently the owner of the Russian River Brewing Company in Santa Rosa, California. Double IPAs have an alcohol content above 7.5% and satiate the palates of beer drinkers who prefer the strong, bitter flavor of hops. Because it can change the flavor and be more expensive to ship hops from the Yakima Valley to the east coast of the U.S., west coast IPAs are known to be a lot more hoppy and bitter, while east coast IPAs have a much more tame and sweeter balance of malts and European hop variants. You can think of that the next time you see a west coast or east coast IPA. I won't be passing through the Yakima Valley. In fact, I'm just passing north of it. As I continue to fall in elevation, I meet the Columbia River for one last time. On the other shore, I find Washington State Route 26, a ride that will turn my compass east into the Palouse region.